everybody, Jeff Macaron here, and today I want to talk about practice. I sometimes forget how much I like practicing, if that makes sense, because I get caught up in my day-to-day -day life and I get involved in other things like making YouTube videos or whatever it may be. So throughout my career, I've picked up some cool pieces of advice or quotes that I think will really work well for me. And one right off the top is, there's no glory in practice, but without practice, there is no glory. That's a good one. Anytime you see someone who plays really, really well, kicking butt on stage or on a YouTube video or something like that, they've practiced a lot, period. But you don't see that. We just think like the overnight success or you, you see some great artist, you're like, oh man, that guy, that woman is amazing. And they didn't do anything. They just, they're just born with that. And that's not really the case. And even if you are born with some, some talent uh, and there are people out there with that, that you know, fairy dust or whatever you want to call it, they still have to practice a lot. Another one is practice to your strengths, not to your weaknesses. Now, there are certain things, of course, that we need to be able to play. If your technique is terrible and you're trying to play some scales, and yeah, you got to work on that. I'm talking about there's a base level that we need to do. If your strength is that you love great melodies, which I hopefully everybody does, you really work that up. So I think some people can physically play guitar faster than others. So if you have that ability, then why not? play to that. That's a great thing to be working on. So you find out what your strengths are, what lights you up, what gets you going, what you think you're naturally good at, and really work that. Because that's when you're going to start to find your own voice, is through the thing that starts to come a little bit more naturally to you in that sense. I just want to take this minute to say if you like my channel please hit the like and subscribe button it helps a lot also i have a brand new course out called soloing with major triads it goes great with my mastering major and minor triad courses that you can get at the link above or below by going over jam guitar lessons also i've got a number of free background tracks 12 great blues background tracks and 16 rock background tracks that are for free just follow the links below the next one is i almost have it that means you don't have it so if you want to go to a performance, you're trying to get a piece together or something really difficult and you almost have it, you're not going to make it on the stage. If you do, it's by sheer luck. So students have this with me all the time. They'll play something like, oh, I had it before. And I'm like, no, well, then you didn't have it. And it sounds kind of harsh, but it's true. It's just simply true. So you just need to practice it more. There's, not a, there's no shame in it. You just need to work on it more. If you can play it slowly, you can play it fast. Here's another one that really kind of resonated with me. If you practice, you get better. It's that simple, which is... Really that simple. If you put in the time and you want to work on practicing something, you will get better at it and you will get better overall. The beautiful thing about practicing is sometimes when you practice one thing, you are practicing many other things and you may not know it until it comes out in your playing. I've experienced this many times that I'll just sit down and I won't have been working on this other thing, but by just playing the instrument consciously and with intent and practicing with intent, other things just get better. Um, I hear things better. My ears expand. I hear music more. Um, you, the more time you spend on your instrument, just the better you're going to get overall. You're going to become a better musician by having better ears. You're going to have better technique. You're going to have better instincts. All these things happen by just practicing. So if you practice and practice intelligently with intent, you will get better. Another one I find to be really true is practice as if you were performing. And that's important because when you're in the practice room and you're working on certain ideas, sometimes you don't really push it hard enough like you would on stage. Maybe if you're standing up, practice standing up or play along with something that gives you the intensity that you believe you will be reaching, hopefully, or experiencing on a stage. Because there's things that can start to happen. You can start to freeze up a little bit, your hands get tired or your muscles lock up because you're really in that moment. So you want to practice that kind of thing where you're just going for it but going for it at home, because that's the only way you're going to be able to physically do that on stage and be able to control your emotions as best as you possibly can. One of my other favorite quotes of all time is, there ain't nothing wrong with you, 100 gigs won't fix. 
And that is completely true. There are so many things that you can practice and practice and practice at home, but there's only things that you can learn when you're on a gig. So in a way that is frustrating, but it's also a little freeing knowing that you're working on things as best you can, but there's certain things that you will never really get when you hear other people play unless you're actually performing and doing it live, especially the kind of music that I like to play, which is jazzy, blues, rock stuff, improv-based music. That's my favorite thing. I'm an improviser. I love improvising. That's why I play the instrument. It's the most fun thing. The only way you get to be a better improviser is if you do it as it was meant to be created in a room with other people, or at least the kind of music I like to play. A fun one that I really like is practice every day that you eat. And clearly my dog, Bo, agrees. It's funny, of course. It's basically saying you need to practice every day. If you want to be really good, if you want to be a world-class musician, or even get to a world-class musician, or to be the best that you can be, to use that cliche, you should be practicing every day. Now, what does practice? Should I be sitting down and practicing scales for an hour every day? If that's what you want to work on, sure. Your instrument should be in your hand every day. I find every day that is not my, in my hand, I get further and further away of being in touch with the instrument on the level that I really feel comfortable at. When I'm most in touch with the instrument is when I'm touring and you're playing live every night. That's a different thing. There's nothing that can recreate that. But the closest thing you can get is playing every single day and playing with intent and really working on your stuff. Another cool thought is, do I want to be the worst guy in the band? No, I never do. So what I do is I make sure that I practice and that's, that spurs me and that's the competitive nature that I can have and I think any musician to a certain extent will have. You never want to be the weakest link. You always want to walk in being on top of your game and for me, practicing allows me for that to happen. If I'm going on a gig and I'm going on the road and I have a bunch of songs to learn and not mine, I will learn those songs inside out, backwards, upside down. I will have them memorized. I know that material inside and out. By doing that, I knock out any chance of me messing that up or as much as I can, right? So I know I'm gonna be solid on the material. And then if there's somebody else in the band who's not so solid in the material, hey, you know, you're, you're ahead of the game. And I've been in situations where it's like that, where I'm the guy who knew the material, and it, it can be very frustrating, but the band leader, if you're hired, always really appreciates it, and that can make you look really good. But on top of that, it makes me sound better because I'm relaxed knowing the material. I'm not worried about uh, what comes next in the song. Not all practice is fun. I would be lying to you if I said I really enjoyed practicing sight reading when I was in college. I hated it and my sight reading shows <laughs> as a result of it because I didn't put that much time in, so I never really got that good at it like most guitar players. But if I want to become a good sight reader, you have to get past that hump. And so if you become pretty good at sight reading, then it becomes fun. Just like anything, if you don't really know your arpeggios really well and you don't find it fun to do, you got to push past it. Then it becomes a lot of fun. Just like a bar chord when you first learned it. I'm never going to get this. This is terrible. This is painful. Nobody could ever get this F chord. And after you stick to it, you get the F chord and then everything gets easier. It's always like that. But not everything is going to be fun to practice. But you have to have a little foresight into the whole thing and look to the future and say, well, once I get this down, it's going to be well worth it. Now, this last one is pretty harsh, but it is true. If you're bored on your instrument, it's a lack of imagination or you're just lazy. So let's talk about that one. That's pretty harsh, right? Yeah, you're lazy. I remember hearing that all through my high school years that I'm lazy, but all the time I was practicing guitar hours a day. So was I lazy? No, I was, my focus was elsewhere. So it's important when we think about what is lazy, we see ourselves as being lazy or it can be lazy, but let's, let's soften that up a little bit. But I, it is true in the harsh sense or lack of imagination. You should say, well, there's so many amazing things available to us, especially now, but at any point in time, um, in our generations, you've had recorded music. So at any point in time, you could put on a record back in the day, a cassette, an eight track, a CD, or stream something or anything now and learn something new from somebody else. That is a great motivator. And if you're bored an instrument, because you're bored because you're playing all the same stuff and you find nothing exciting. So listen to some music and find something that gets you excited and work on that. Okay, thanks so much once again. If you like my channel, please hit the like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one, and get practicing. Mm -hmm.